QuickBooks Online 2023 Payroll Adjustment. Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file. We started up in a prior presentation using the 30 day free trial. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. We also have opened the free QuickBooks Online sample company. If you want these two open at the same time, we suggest using the incognito window or another browser. You can open incognito window if using Google Chrome by selecting the three dots in the browser, incognito window, then search in your search engine for QuickBooks Online test drive. We're going to be using the sample company to compare and contrast the accounting view, the view that the Get Great Guitars file is in, and the business view, the view the sample company is in. If you want to toggle back and forth between the two views, you can do so by selecting the cog up top, the changing of the views down below. Opening up reports to put uh, tabs to put reports in, that is right clicking on the tab up top like we do every time to duplicate it. Right clicking on that duplicated tab to duplicate it again. Go into the tab in the middle so we can go to the reports at the bottom left and then open up one of our faves, the balance sheet, one of our favorite reports. And then note that if you're in the business view, by the way, the reports are located in the business overview section and then in the reports. So then I'm going to go to the tab to the left or to the right that's on the right side and then go to the reports again on the left and then open up the profit and loss like we do every time. Close up the hand boogie, scroll up, change the range from 010123 tab, 123123 tab, run it to refresh it, tab to the middle like we do every time, close the boogie, and then change the range from 010123 tab, 123123 tab, run it to refresh it. That's the setup process that we do every time. Now, last time we ran payroll, and we're going to make a slight change to the payroll because we want to match our practice problem and match what's on our bank uh, reconciliations. And just to point out also uh, the process that you might have to go through if changing payroll. So if I go to the first tab here and I hold control down and I go down to the payroll, we went to last time, we went to the overview and then we ran payroll, which is in the run payroll on the right hand side. Now this processed in essence, the payroll checks and the withholdings and the impacts on the financial statements from the transactions. Now we just want to point out that with payroll, it can be a little bit more complex to make adjustments to payroll. We can't just go in and adjust the paychecks as easily because we have to be careful about all the withholdings and calculations related to the payroll taxes. Also, when trying to practice and learn payroll, it can be difficult with a practice problem because the payroll works best when it's running real time. In other words, if you're working this practice problem at some point into the future, if it's too far into the future, then you might have difficulty running the payroll because it works best in real time. The other issue with that, we do have payroll courses to kind of dive into this in more detail, but the other problem with payroll is that payroll looks quite different from the first quarter to the fourth quarter because there's going to be caps that could be hit and th those are most clear when you see the the FUTA tax federal unemployment tax act which has a fairly low tax so the taxes with relation to that particular payroll tax will be a lot different from quarter one to quarter two to quarter three to quarter four in which case quarter four unless you have new employees you're not going to see much of that tax and the social security has a cap as well although it's a lot higher of a cap so if anybody's going to hit it they wouldn't hit it until quarter three or quarter four or something like that but you don't get to see those changes if you only process one quarter in other words if you're trying to uh, process or see what's going on with your 941s when you process them on a quarterly basis 
the typical thing is to say, okay, well, it's quarter two. I'm going to compare what happened to quarter one to quarter two, but things can be a little bit different because of these caps that people can hit on it. And so that's something that we got to, you know, you got to just kind of be aware of. And it's a difficulty to run the payroll problems. Now, also, uh, what was impacted on the financial statements are multiple accounts here. So we've got, of course, the liabilities that were impacted, you'll recall, for the withholdings, for our withholdings and the employee withholdings. We've got then on the income statement, we've got the wages and the tax accounts that were impacted. And we have a whole bunch of other payroll for, uh, reports. Those are going to help us to report the payroll tax stubs to the employees on a year to date basis, as well as a paycheck by paycheck basis and do the 941s to 940s to W2s and W3s. Therefore, it's not as easy for us to just make a change. In other words, if I'm saying there's a check that is incorrect, normally I, I can go, okay, well, I'll just go to the balance sheet here and I'm going to go into the uh, cash and I can say, okay, this check, maybe it's wrong for whatever reason. It doesn't match what actually was deposited into the bank account or something like that when we do the bank reconciliation. Well, I can't just go in here and and change the amount of the check. Clearly, it's going to cause an issue. And even with the dates, we want to kind of be careful with that, because if I if I mess up the reporting, the way, if I don't do the payroll within the QuickBooks system, then the reports will not match and your W-2s won't match and your you know, your calculations for the payroll taxes and all that kind of stuff will get all messed up. So that's why the adage. Uh, for payroll is typically do it first the first time uh, and measure measure twice cut once as opposed to tinkering until you get it right some things are great for tinkering until you get it right some things are better off to get it right the first time measure twice cut once payroll better off to get it the first time if you do make an error then typically you'd need to avoid the check as opposed to deleting it because usually in practice we want to make sure that we have a paper trail of the data because employees are the most likely person to sue us, unfortunately, as well. And it's and it's most likely that we're going to run into problems that we want to see a paper trail with. So I want to be as transparent as possible uh, with everything that we're putting into the system. Now, in our practice problem, so you'd usually have to avoid it and then you'd have to process the payroll again so that the system can process the payroll check properly and do all the reporting properly. Okay, so, but in our practice problem, we made an error in, in the recording of one of the taxes. And I wanted to tie out to our practice problem over here to this paycheck that's going to be on our bank reconciliation. So we're going to do something that I don't recommend doing in practice, but we're going to do in the practice problem to make the bank reconciliation correct. So and the, and the error was in the calculation of, uh, of Social Security and Medicare. So, so just to note the issue, so you can see how these kind of problems happen with payroll taxes, uh, and, and how they can get kind of complex, you know, all of a sudden, right? We had, we had an error in the calculation of, I think the social security tax, right? So if you got an error in the social security tax calculation, what is that going to impact? Well, if I go, if I go to the balance sheet, the balance sheet got deleted here. I'm going to go from. 010123 to 123123 and run it then we're going to have <clears throat> we're going to have this liability that's going to be impacted here for the taxes but it's not only just going to be the employee portion but also the employer portion because there's a matching thing so if i got it wrong on the employee side it's likely that we got it wrong on both sides and then on the income statement there's going to be an impact on both the wages because the wages include the employee portion of the tax and on the taxes here, which are payroll taxes, because those are the taxes that we pay over and above. So you can see just this little kind of miscalculation can get quite complex in the number of things that are gonna be impacted. Also, the other reports are gonna be impacted, the W-2 stub or the paycheck stubs are impacted and so on. So to do, to do that, we're to just make our bank reconciliation correct and tie it to our practice problem numbers, I'm going to make another transaction just directly into the check register, which you wouldn't do in practice, but we will do in the practice problem. So we're going to go down to the accounting on the left-hand side, and then I'm going to go into the chart of accounts. And if you're in 
the other view, by the way, that would be under the bookkeeping and then the chart of accounts. So that's where it is under the business view. If you're looking at the business view, I'm going to close up the hand boogie. We're going to go, go into the bank account. I'm going to use the register to enter this. So we'll just use the register and I'm going to hit the drop down. And what I'm going to do is I'm trying to adjust this check right here, but I don't want to actually physically adjust the check. I'm just going to add another one with the same check number. So when I do the bank reconciliation and that part of the practice problem, we can see what is going on. Again, you wouldn't do this in practice to a payroll account because what will happen, as you'll see, is the payroll reports will no longer tie out to payroll if, and, and we'll point that out. I'll show you exactly why that's an issue here because our, our payroll accounts won't tie out to the reports. And at the, end of the, at the end of the year, you would like to have, of course, your reports that you're gonna make, your 941s, your 940s, your W2s, your W3s, your financial statements, the amounts reported on the, for expenses and any liabilities to tie out uh, to tie out, right? And if they don't, you would think there's an issue. So in any case, I'm going to hit another check just to show you that. And we're going to say this is going to happen on 013122. I'm going to make the same check number as, as uh, 1012. The payee is going to be Adam Hamilton, who is an employee. And then this is going to be to adjust payroll. And this is going to be a payment of, we're going to say $60 to make the adjustment. And this is going to go into payroll liabilities, payroll liabilities in that form. So that's going to adjust it. So we get back to where we need to be. Again, you wouldn't do this in practice. We're just doing it for the practice problem. It will throw off our payroll reports, which is an issue in practice it would be an issue so i'm going to say okay it has the same check number i'm going to say okay i'm just doing that so when i when i reconcile we can i can show you what's happening with the bank rec now the other issue was with a was with the payroll liabilities on the employer side which didn't have any impact on the checking account because we didn't write a check for our portion our portion of the liabilities so it's just basically a journal entry so for the other side i'm going to go back to the register and I'm going to, I'm going to choose the register to pick a journal entry from, and that's going to be the payroll liability account. So I'm going to scroll down to the payroll liability. Here it is. I'm going to go into that register and I'm going to increase it again, but this time with just a journal entry, because all we have is a journal entry here because it's not the checking account. I'm going to go, Oh, one, three, one, two, two. I'll call it journal entry. Uh, that's fine. Journal entry two. And we're going to say the payee, I won't put anything. I'll say payroll, payroll adjustment. And this is going to be a decrease of 60. That's to match it. And the other side is going to go to the payroll expense, expense account or tax, the taxes, the payroll tax. There it is. Payroll expenses. There it is. The taxes. All right, there's the other side. So that means that the liability account got hit by both the employee and employer portion. And this part is going to the expense account, uh, expense account side because cash hasn't been affected. We haven't paid it yet. All right, let's save it and close it and show you what's going on here. I'm going to go back to the balance sheet and let's go back here to our balance sheet and let's run it. And so now with the checking account, if I go into the checking account, I'm going to have this adjustment that we put in a check for 12, uh, 10, 12. No, I put it in there as of 2022. Sorry about that. I got the wrong year now. So I'm going to change the date up top to 2022, run it, and then I'm going to change it from 22 to 23. So there it is. I'm going to go back into it again. See if I can get this. Can you get it right for crying out loud? How many? We're going to make this up to 23. We're going to make it to 23 and then save and close it again. And so there it is. So, so now we've got this adjustment down here with the two that we're going to say are basically one check. That'll help us to do the bank reconciliation when we get to that part of the practice problem or course. All right, going back. And then we also had an impact on the 
this one that should have two $60 amounts, one being a journal entry. And I think I did the same thing with the dates, did I not? Let's take it back to 2022. I'm working in the past. So yeah, I got a date issue. I'm gonna change the date to 2023. Where is your head? Wake up, get, get some coffee or something. Wasting my time. You're wasting my time. I'm sorry. Here we go. There's the adjustment. And then here's the adjustment for that one. So that looks good. And then go back and then tap to the right. And I'm going to run this one. We made an adjustment to the, the taxes tab. So the taxes tab. So there we have it. Okay. Now, even if you figured that that was correct in practice, we wouldn't do that in practice typically because even if you felt like that was the right thing to do, there was an error and you made a journal entry to fix it for that particular pay period, it's gonna cause all kinds of problems if you actually make a journal entry to any of these accounts, wages, taxes, and the payroll liability accounts, because then these accounts will no longer tie out to the payroll reports and the payroll reports are what are being used to create the 941s, the 940, the W2s and the W3s. So at the end of the year or at the end of the quarter, when you try to tie out your forms to what's on the financial statement, you'll have this difference and then you're going to have then then you should figure it out, right? Then you're going to be like, "Okay, there's an issue, something is wrong. Uh, you know, what are we going to do with that issue?" So in other words, if I was going to go to this tab, duplicate it, and then I go to my reports down below. My uh, reports are going to be down here. And I go to my payroll reports, closing up the boogie, scrolling down to the payroll reports. And what was the one we looked at? The payroll detail report, I think. So let's look at the payroll detail report. Then now we've got this information and if i look at it at the total this is the total that we have thus far the the gross pay you would think would be matching out to basically the income statement on the gross pay 698333 it does because we didn't make any transaction to that one however the employer taxes the amount that we paid we changed by that sixty dollars five three four point two three minus if i go back on over here to just look let's go to the income statement and look at the taxes now we've got that difference minus the 474.23 there's that 60 dollars difference that's an issue even if i thought it was right here but because i posted something a journal entry not through the payroll it's not going to be reflected in the payroll reports and the payroll reports are the things that are going to be used to be creating the 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 w2s the 941s the 940 and so on also the liability we would expect for payroll liability to be at this 7517.56 because we haven't yet paid the payroll liability so if i go back to the balance sheet and we look at the payroll liability actually that's not right that's the total payroll cost i'm looking for just the taxes the withholdings that we've made that we haven't yet so that would be 1614.23 that we withheld from the employees and then our taxes come out to the 534.23 so that means we should have a liability that we owe to the government at this point in time here and that doesn't quite match minus this 2028.46 so we have a difference of 60 and 60 that 120. so again we made this adjustment for our practice problem so that we can do the bank reconciliations because we so that we can tie out to our bank rec here and also i think it's a good just example of what not to do in practice why you would why you would want to make a change by voiding uh the check and that's the only way to do it even if you think you're right you shouldn't be posting anything directly to these accounts because if you do then the, the payroll system isn't going to match your reports aren't going to match and then you're gonna that's gonna is, have an issue if you got an audit like that you, your payroll reports don't match your at the end of the year you should be tying out your payroll reports your w-2s your 10 your 941s and everything to what's actually being reported on the financial statements hopefully they should tie out if you used quickbooks correctly and everything was run through the the quickbooks system if you post things directly to a particular account then things won't tie out and you're you're exposing yourself to problems 
if there was an audit or something like that or to make changes at the end of the year which is the worst time to be making changes you'd like to do that as you go measure twice cut once okay let's go back to our reports we get the point i get the picture let's go to the reports you don't have to belabor the point you're the one that made the error you're talking like we like i made the error trial balance let's go into the trial balance and check our numbers this is where we stand at this point in time if your numbers match out that's great if not try to ch expand the date range let's change the date range from 010123 to 123123. okay now if your numbers match then great if not try to expand the date range and then drill down on any missing or differences and see if you can change them if they're not payroll items if they're payroll items you might have to avoid them and then enter it again uh, or do our adjustment that we just did, which you can change the date if that one is different. And uh, we'll do a transaction detail report at the end of entering the first month of data, which helps us drill down on any differences.